Hey there, Ebenezer Youth. For those who may not know who I am, I am Will, and I am your junior and senior youth pastor here at Ebenezer Youth. And we are going to be embarking into our last part of our series on belonging. So I just want to take a moment and acknowledge that some of you may be new around here at Ebenezer Youth, and I just want to welcome you here who might be watching this online. And I also want to acknowledge for those who've been faithfully been a part of Ebenezer Youth long term, whether that has been online, whether that has been in person, or maybe a mixture of both. I just want to acknowledge and I don't take for granted that you continue to faithfully come and be a part of this community day in and day out. So we've been working through a series on belonging and this is our last part of our belonging series. And I want to recap what exactly we've been talking about for this last month. So to recap, at the very beginning of our belonging series, I kicked us off by asking a very important question, what is belonging? And further to that, what we found belonging to be is essentially, where do I fit in? That is the very base of what we think about when we think of belonging. And further to that, belonging is defined by our connection with other people. It's how we feel when we fit in with certain groups of people, whether it is for good or whether it is for bad. And when I talked about how I believe our world does not give us a proper solid sense of where we can belong, that is where I ended off with. Which led to Bryce's message that happened two weeks ago. Bryce arrowed us into this idea that we all belong somewhere because we belong to God and God allows us to belong to Him. And that leads us to today. This isn't going to be the typical youth message because we have already told you the things you need to know. That you know that the world doesn't give you a secure place for you to belong. I think that's obvious. And maybe if you're a church kid, you really do know that you can belong to God and that He belongs to you. But maybe you're not fully there yet. But what we want to accomplish in this message is finding practical and applicable ways on how we can pursue belonging. So that's what we're going to do today. But before we really dive in deep, let's open our hearts in prayer. So join me with prayer. Jesus, we just thank you for today. And it's an amazing opportunity for us to think a bit about belonging and where exactly we can fit in. But as we do that, allow us to find practical and applicable ways to pursue belonging, how you see belonging happen actively in your word. So I thank you for this day, God, and this opportunity to communicate your word and your message. And as I do that, Lord, I ask that you would make me less so that you become great and that I would be able to communicate with passion, love, and compassion. So I pray this in your name. Amen. Awesome. So today, we're looking at the practical and applicable ways on how we can pursue belonging together. And that means a lot of things, but here are three things I want us to think about. Number one, where do we currently find belonging if we do? Number two, where do we find belonging at youth? And is this even a place you can belong? And then number three, how can you invite others into this place as a place of belonging? So I want us to open up by opening God's word, the Bible on what I think could be one of the most important passages that we can find on what belonging looks like. So open up your Bibles to Acts 2, 42 to 47, or follow us along on the screen. And there will be a screen kind of beside us for that. And so basically for some context of the passage we're looking at, this is the first ever church in history. And this is right after Jesus died on the cross, was raised again, and ascended to heaven. And all these people who believe in Jesus, they gather together, and this is what happens, the first church. Acts 2, 42 to 47 says this, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and to sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles began to perform many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared the meals with great joy and generosity. All the while, praising God and enjoying the good will of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship to those who were being saved. I want us to notice something. In this passage, the first church ever, these people devoted themselves to teaching, fellowship, sharing meals, and prayer. But what I find super significant behind the what they did is why they did it. Before the what came the why. These people came together because they felt the sense of belonging. As the word says, a deep sense of awe came over them all. That's what 
the Bible says in Acts 2, 42 to 47. And what this led to was true community. That was the why. They realized that they belonged to God, and because of that, they needed to pursue God together. It says that each day the Lord added to their fellowship. I want you to notice that. In a true Jesus-centered community, a place of belonging, you were able to create this culture around belonging around God. And that happens when you're able to start belonging, bringing more people to experience God, and that keeps multiplying. That is the kind of community that Acts 2, 42 to 47 was like. This community of belonging, a community of purpose, a community of love. How awesome would it be to be in a community like this? And let me just say, true Jesus-centered community just doesn't occur here in the Bible, but it actually happens in real life. Obviously, sometimes it does not, and sometimes it does. And I really hope that you're able to feel like you have that kind of belonging here at Ebenezer Youth. But maybe you don't, and that's okay. But what I do want to do is I want to hear from you so that we can go forward to pursue real belonging together. So, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to be working through eight different questions. So, at our youth in person, what we did is we went through a live survey that we did. But I'm going to be doing it a bit different online. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment and ask these questions. I'm going to have them appear on the side here as well. So, the first question will be, what do you, where do you feel like you belong the most? Number two will be, how do you personally feel you belong at youth? Number three, do you feel like you belonging at youth has been getting better or worse in the past three to six months? Number four, what could be done for you to make youth a place of belonging? Number five, what are the ideas you have to make youth a better place to belong? Number six, do you feel like you belong, could bring people to a place like Ebenezer Youth to join in on our community? Number seven, what would need to be done at Ebenezer Youth to make a place for you to bring other people in? And number eight, overall, do you feel like you've grown in your belonging in God? And so those are the eight things that I have. They'll be beside me right here. And I want you to take time to work through it. So pause the video and take a moment to work through those. Okay, now that you've unpaused the video and hopefully you've been able to reflect, maybe write down and think about some of these questions, I want to be able to work through you and be able to think with you in this. And I want you to be honest with yourselves. Compare yourselves to what Acts 2, 42 to 47 says, a place where they found a deep sense of belonging, a place where they were able to do amazing things together. We at Ebenezer Youth want to find that kind of belonging together because that's what true community is. And we want to have a community such as that and be able to invite other people to experience and know a community such as this. Tommy Givens, a scholar in the New Testament, says this about belonging. If the gospel is especially about the way God empowers people to love one another, then friendship in this name is power at the most intimate. Friendship is what Jesus told his disciples as they were searching when he washed their feet and then loved them to death. Friendship is something that is modeled for us in a few stories of the Bible, but has so many topics covered in it. It is the way that God has drawn near to us through, so, through much suffering, so that we are able to discover, to draw near to God, and to draw near to one another. I want you to be honest and think about how you can be at a place to find belonging such as this. We can belong together, and voicing how you feel about that is important. But I want you to be thinking about how you can be a part of creating belonging here at Ebenezer Youth, and also contributing to what's happening. So I want to challenge you to bring your people that you love to experience belonging around God. Because if God is real, then it means everything. And we need to find that belonging in Him. Galatians 3, 26-28 tells us this, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united in Christ and baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And whether you believe this or not, Jesus still calls you his children, and in him you are united with him. You are one in Jesus. The belonging that God even invites us to is so much radical than one can imagine. And my hope is that you will be able to find that belonging in God first, but able to find Ebenezer Youth as a vessel to that. True Christian community. So, to end off, I want to pray with you all 
to end us off in belonging as we embark into mental health in a few weeks from now. But remember, you belong to God and you can find a community truly where you can find that kind of belonging as a vessel of faith, hope, and love. So let me pray. God, I just thank you for this day and for this opportunity to work through belonging. And I pray as we reflect on some of these questions that you would just bring to light what is happening in our lives. Maybe where we've fallen short. Maybe where we eke and want belonging in a profound way. And God, I just ask that you would continue to show us your love, your mercy, and your ways. And I ask as we continue to think about these things, that you would allow us to think about how we can follow you in it. I thank you, God, that you are love, that you are light, that you bring light out of the darkness. And I thank you for who you are. So I ask that you would continue to show us your ways, your love, and that we would be able to be a community together that can find belonging, purpose, identity, and we would be able to pursue that together in your ways. So I pray this in your name. Amen. Awesome. See you later, Ebenezer Youth. Have a great week.